Hi, excellent biologists. This is for Honors Biology Chapter 8, Section 8.1, an overview of photosynthesis. So here we can see photosynthesizers can be small microscopic organisms or large tall trees. Um, plants, um, which we will be talking about, are known as autotrophs. Um, they can take inorganic molecules and make organic molecules with them whereas heterotrophs need preformed organic molecules that they break down. If we look at a Minecraft version, Minecraft version of um, a tree, let's look to see what are the, the things going into the tree that the tree is consuming and what types of things are the tree is the tree producing. So we can see up here we have sunlight coming in, um, carbon dioxide is coming in, because you know the equation for photosynthesis and a byproduct of photosynthesis are going to be sugars, and then a product will be water and oxygen. Now, in order for plants to do photosynthesis, they are gonna need some carbon dioxide, they are gonna need some sun, sunlight, and they will need water, which they get from their roots. If we looked into a cross section of a leaf, which you're looking at right here, and if I blew up one section of that leaf right here, you could see multiple plant cells in the center. The blue kind of blobs in each cell, I hope you know that those would be called, and you're thinking vacuoles, I hope. And then the little green polka dots inside each cell, those would be, and hopefully you're thinking chloroplast. This is a vein of a leaf, the blue with the red and the blue inside. And we're gonna just take one of the cells in that cross section and um, within it, we're gonna look at one chloroplast. And when you look at the one chloroplast here, you can see it's double membraned on the outside. When we discussed the endosymbiotic hypothesis, we discussed that. There are stacks of what looks like green pancakes inside. Those are called thylakoid membranes. The space around the green pancakes would be called stroma. And um, you can see here to the right, there's an actual photograph um, of a um, chloroplast. And then a blow up here. You can see the thylakoid membranes and then the space around that. Um, and those are grana, and then the space around that is called the stroma. Now you have already learned cellular respiration and you know what can occur on those inner membranes, things like an electron transport chain. In our song, that was the na 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 na. The same thing is gonna happen on these inner membranes and we are gonna make ATP as well. And here is a little summary diagram which might be good to capture into your um, group shared notes um, for structure of a chloroplast and you would want to be able to know all the things that I've identified here and this will end um, Section 8.1, but I'm going to help you filling in your notes. So let's look at the basics on photosynthesis Now we're at our group shared notes. It converts solar energy into chemical energy of carbohydrates Can be used for structure or fuel autotrophs produce their own food, heterotrophs are consumers. They take in preformed organic molecules as building blocks and as a source of energy. And number four, oxygen is the second product of photosynthesis. It allows for aerobic respiration to take place, aerobic respiration to take place. The reactants for solar energy, water and CO2, water comes in through the roots. CO2 is in through the stomatal openings in the leaves and both diffuse into the chloroplast. Both diffuse into the chloroplast. And you're going to be doing part of a pogol in just a second where you will look at that a little bit um, in more detail. Chloroplast anatomy, it is a double membrane. The stroma is a semi-fluid interior. The thylakoid membranes are for increased surface area. And then the pigments are embedded in the membranes. And that's it for part one.